Hello everyone. Today we will study matrix operations. First of all, let me introduce matrix addition. Let A and B be two matrices with the same size. Then, when we add matrices A and B, we add their corresponding entries. For example, let A be the matrix 2, negative 6, 4, 1, 3, negative A. And let B be the matrix 4, 2, negative 1, negative 3, negative 4, and 1. Find A plus B. When we try to add A and B together, we try to add their corresponding entries. That's matrix A plus matrix B. Add their corresponding entries. So add the first entry to the first entry. 4 plus 2 plus 4 is 6. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. 4 plus negative 1 is 3. 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2. 3 plus negative 4 is negative 1. Negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7. That's how we add two matrices. Note. If matrix A and B has different size, if matrix A and B have different size, then the matrix addition A plus B is undefined. Next, let me introduce scalar multiplication. Let A be a matrix, and let K be a scalar. A scalar is a real number, so here K could be any real numbers. In general, we use capital letter for matrix, and with lowercase letter, we present scalars. Then, when we multiply K times A, we multiply K to every entry in A. Let's look at this example here. Let A be the matrix, 2, negative 3, negative 1, 4, negative 1, 5, and k equal to 3. Find k times a. How do we compute k times a? k is 3 here. a is the matrix, 2, negative 3, negative 1, 4, negative 1, 5. When we multiply a scalar to a matrix, we multiply the scalar to each entry in the matrix. So, 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. 3 times 4 is 15. That's how we multiply a scalar to a matrix. Another example. Let A be a matrix. Two, negative four, one, five. And let B be a matrix. Negative three, negative two, one, negative four. How do we compute subtraction? How do we compute A minus B? How do we compute A minus B? We know matrix addition, we know scalar multiplication. How do we compute A minus B? So for A minus B, consider this, this can be rewrite as A plus negative 1 times B. For A minus B, consider we have A plus negative 1 times B. Then it can be written as matrix A is 2, negative 4, 1, 5 plus negative 1 times B. B is negative 3, negative 2, 1, negative 4. We do multiplication first. So leave matrix A the same. 2, negative 4, 1, 5. Do scalar multiplication first. Distribute negative 1. I get 
three, two, negative one, and four. Then add the matrix. We add the corresponding entries for these two matrices. I get two plus three is five. Negative four plus two is negative two. One plus negative one is zero. Five plus four is nine. That's how we subtract two matrices. However, this computation doesn't look simple. Is there an easier way to do matrix subtraction? Let's observe matrix A and B. Or if I subtract the corresponding entries directly, what do I get? 2 minus negative 3 is 5. Negative 4 minus negative 2 is negative 2. 1 minus 1 is 0. 5 minus negative 4 is 9. So here we can see that if I subtract the corresponding entries directly, I get exactly the same answer. So that's a simple way. Note. The A and B be two matrices with the same size. When we compute A minus B, we can subtract the corresponding entries directly. We can subtract the corresponding entries directly. That's much easier than compute a plus negative 1 times b. Subtract directly is much, much easier than doing this way. Next, let me introduce matrix replication. Let a be an m by r matrix, and let b be an r by m matrix. Then the product a, b is an m by m matrix. What does it mean here? What it says here is that a is an m by r matrix. That means matrix A has M rows and R columns. B is a R by M matrix. That means matrix B has R rows and N columns. If the number of columns in matrix A is the same as number of rows in matrix B, then their product AB will have M rows and N columns. If number of columns in matrix A is the same as number of rows in matrix B, then their product AB will have M rows and N columns. That's what it says here. So if A is a M by M by R matrix and B is a R by M matrix, then their product AB is a M by M matrix, whose entries in the ith row in the dress column is defined as the sum of the products of the corresponding entries in the ith row of matrix A in the dress column of matrix, matrix B. What it says here is that in matrix AB, if we try to find the entries in the ith row and the dress column, we pick an ith row in matrix A and the dress column in matrix B. Then we multiply the corresponding entries and add them up. That's the entries in the ith row and dress column in matrix AB. Now let me show you an example. It will make more sense to you. Look at this example here. Let A be the matrix 2, 1, 4, negative 1, 3, 5. Let B be the matrix 3, 2, negative 2, negative 4, 1, negative 1. Find, find A times B and B times A. Let's find A times B first. A times B. Matrix A is 2, 1, 4, negative 1, 3, and 5. Matrix B is 3, 2, negative 2, negative 4, 1, negative 1. How do we multiply matrix A and B? Here, A is a 2 by 3 matrix. 
it has two rows and three columns. B is a three by two matrix. It has three rows and two columns. If the number of columns in matrix A is the same as the number of rows in matrix B, then their product will be a two by two matrix, will be two rows and two columns. Their product will be two rows and two columns. The first number represents rows and the last number represents columns. So the answer will be a two by two matrix. Their product will be a two by two matrix. This place is in the first row, first column in matrix AB. This place is in the first row, first column in matrix AB. This place is in the first row, first column in matrix AB. So I pick the first row in order to find the entries here. I pick the first row in matrix A. First column in matrix B. First row in matrix A is 2, 1, 4. First column in matrix B is 3, negative 2, 1. Pick the first row in matrix A. First column in matrix B. Then we multiply the corresponding entries. Multiply the corresponding entries. 2 times 3, 1 times negative 2, 4 times 1. Multiply the corresponding entries and then add it up. That's an entry in matrix AB. 2 times 3 is 6. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 4 times 1 is 4. Together is A. So that's an entry in matrix AB. That's the first row, first column in matrix AB, which is A. That's the first row, first column in matrix AB. Next, next entry. This entry here is first row, second column. This entry here is first row, second column. So we pick the first row from matrix A, second column from matrix B. First row, second column. Two, one, four. Times two, negative four, negative one. So for the first row, second column, I pick first row in matrix A, second column in matrix B. Then multiply the corresponding entries. 2 times 2, 1 times negative 4, 4 times negative 1, and then adding up. Together, 2 times 2 is 4, 1 times negative 4 is negative 4, 4 times negative 4 is negative 4, adding up, I get negative 4. So that's the entry in the first row, second column. Next entry, that's, that's in the first row, that's in the second row, first column. This place is in the second row, first row, second row, that's, that's in the second row, first column. So I pick, this, I pick the second row from matrix A, first column from matrix B. This is second row, first column. I pick the second row from matrix A, first column from matrix B. It's negative one, three, five. Times three, negative two, and one. Multiply the corresponding entries and add them up. Negative one times three. Three times negative two. Five times one. Multiply and then add them up. I get negative 3 plus negative 6 plus 5. 
which is negative four. That's an entry in the second row, first column. Next entry in the second row, first column, which is negative four. Next entry, that's in the second row, second column. That's in the second row, second column. So I pick in the second row in the first first matrix. Second column in the second in the second matrix. I have negative one, three, five times two, negative four, negative one. Multiplying corresponding entries and adding up. Let's multiply corresponding corresponding entries first. Negative one times two. Three times negative four. Five times negative one. Adding up. Let's multiply first. Negative one times two is negative two. Three times negative four is negative twelve. Five times negative one is negative five. Adding up. I get negative nineteen. That's an entry in the second row, second column. That's how that's how we multiply A B. Now how about B A? How do we multiply B A? Well we multiply matrix B A. Let me write matrix B first. Matrix B is three, two, negative negative two and negative four. One negative one times matrix A. Matrix A is two, one, four. Negative one, three, and five. Here, matrix B is a three by two matrix. It has three rows and two columns. Matrix A is a two by three matrix. It has two rows and three columns. If number of columns in the first matrix, it's the same as number of rows in the second matrix. Then we can multiply the matrix. And their product will be three rows and three columns. Three rows and three columns. First number represents rows. Second number, second number represents columns. The matrix A, B times A will be three rows and three columns. So it's a three by three matrix. This entry here is in the first row, first column. This matrix is in the first row, first column. So we pick the first row in the first matrix. In the first column in the second matrix, multiply the corresponding entries. First row, first column. First row, first column. Multiply the corresponding entries. Three times two, two times negative one. I get six and negative two. And then adding up, I get four. So that's an entry in the first row, first column. I get four here. Next, that's in the first row, second column. That's an entry in the first row, second column. So I pick the first row in the first matrix, second column in the second in the second matrix. I get three two times one three. First row, second column. That's in the first row, second column. Then multiply the corresponding entries. I get three times one, two times three. Three times one is three. Two times three is six. Together, adding up, I get 9. That's the entry in the first row, second column. Next, this entry is in the, f that's in the first row and the third column. This entry is, is in the first row, third column. So I pick first row in the first matrix. And the third column in the second matrix. Multiply the corresponding entries and adding up. Multiply the corresponding entries and adding up. 
three times four. Two times five. Three times four is twelve. Two times five is ten. Adding up, I get twenty-two. That's the entry in the first row, third column. Next, this entry is is in the second row, first column. This entry is that's in the second row, first column. So I pick the second row from first matrix, and pick the first column from second matrix. I have negative two, negative four, and two negative one. Multiply the corresponding entries and then add them up. Negative two times two is negative two times two, and negative four times negative one. Negative two times two is negative four. Negative four times one is positive four. Adding up, I get zero. So that's an entry in the second row, first column. Next entry, that's in the second row, second column. So I pick the second row from first matrix, and I pick second column from second matrix. I get negative two, negative four times one three. Multiply the corresponding entries. Negative two times one, negative four times three, I get negative two and negative twelve, and then adding up, I get negative fourteen. That's an entry in the second row, second column. Next, that's in the second row, third column. That's in the second row, third column. So I pick the second row in the first matrix, in the third column, in the second matrix. I get negative two, four, negative two, negative four. Let me put it here. Negative two, negative four, times four times five. Multiply the corresponding entries. Two negative I got negative two times four, and negative four times five. Multiply, I get negative eight and negative twenty. Adding up, I get negative twenty eight. That's the entry in the second row, third column. Next, this entry is in the is in the third row, first column. So I pick the third row from first matrix, and the third and the first column from second matrix. I have one negative one times two negative one. Third row, first column. Then multiply the corresponding entries. I get one times two, and negative one times negative one. Multiply, I get two and one. Adding up, I get three. That's the entry in the third row, first column. Next, this entry is in the third row, second column. So I pick the third row from first matrix. In the second column from second matrix. Multiply the corresponding entries. One times one. Negative one times three. Together, I have one plus negative three, which is negative two. That's the entry in the. Third row, second column. Next entry. That's in the third row, third column. So I pick the third row from first matrix, and third column from second matrix. I get one negative one times four five. Multiply the corresponding entries. I get one times four. Negative one times five, and then adding up. One times four is four. Negative one times five is negative five. Adding up, I get negative one. So, this comp this computation here is what it says. The sum of the product of the corresponding entries in the i row of matrix A and the dress column of matrix B. Sum of the products. Product means multiplication. We multiply first and then find the sum. That's what, mean, that's what it says. Sum of the products of the corresponding entry in the i row of matrix A 
and the this column of matrix B. That's what it says here. Now, for matrix multiplication, be very, very careful. If the number of columns in matrix A is not the same as number of rows in matrix B, then the product AB is undefined. So keep it in mind. For matrix multiplication, if the number of columns in matrix A is not the same as the number of rows in matrix B, then the product AB is undefined. Another thing, the product in general for matrix preparation, the product AB and BA, they are not the same. In general, the product AB and BA, they are not the same. For real numbers, they are the same. When we multiply two numbers, 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. But for matrices, A times B is not the same as B times A. So keep it in mind. Also, in general, AB is not the same as BA. For matrix, matrix multiplication, AB is not the same as BA. Another example, we can see it here. Let A be the matrix 1, 2, 3, negative 2. Let B be the matrix 2, negative 1, 4, 1, 0, 2. If I multiply A, B, what do I get? If I multiply A, B, what do I get? 1, 2, 3, negative 2 times 2, negative 1, 4, 1, 0, 2. Matrix A is a 2 by 2 matrix. It has 2 rows, 2 columns. Matrix B is a 2, is a two by 3 matrix. It has 2 rows, 3 columns. If I multiply AB, number of columns in matrix A is the same as number of rows in matrix B. If I multiply AB, it will be a 2 by 3 matrix. It will be 2 by 3 matrix will be 2 rows and 3 columns. It will be 2 rows and 3 columns. For the first entry here, that's in the first row. First row, first column. So I take first row times first column. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. That's in the first row, second column. So I take first row times second column. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. 2 times 0 is 0. Negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1. That's in the first row, third column. So I take first row times third column. 1 times 4 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. That's in the second row, first column. So I take second row times first column. 2 times 3 is 6. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. 6 plus negative 2 is 4. That's in the second row, second column. So I take second row times second column here. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. 0 times negative 2 is 0. So I get negative 3. 
that's in the second row, third column. So I take second row times third column. 4 times 3 is 12. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. 12 plus, 12 plus negative 4 is A. That's A times B. Now how about B times A here? Matrix B is 2, negative 1, 4. 1, 0, 2. Matrix A is 1, 2, 3, negative 2. Here, first matrix is a 2 by 3 matrix. It has two rows, three colors. Second matrix is a 2 by 2 matrix. It has two rows and two colors. Here, the number of colors in the first matrix is not the same as number of rows in the second matrix. We can see that B times A is undefined. We can multiply the rows to the colors. Yeah, they don't have the same number of elements. We can multiply the rows to the colors. So that's undefined. So here we can see that AB is a 2 by 3 matrix, but BA is undefined. So we can see that AB in general is not the same as BA. For matrix multiplication, AB in general is not, not the same as BA. And also, if the number of columns in the first matrix is not the same as the number of rows in the second matrix, then the matrix multiplication is undefined. Next, let me introduce transpose. Let A be a matrix. The transpose of A is a matrix obtained by interchanging rows and columns of A, denoted by A transpose. Let's look at an example here. Let A be the matrix A11, A12, A13, A14, A15, A21, A22, A23, and so on. Let A be a 3 by 5 matrix. A has 3 rows and 5 columns. Let A be a 3 by 5 matrix. Let B be a 2 by 4 matrix. B has 2 rows, 4 columns. Let C be a 1 by 4 matrix. C has 1 rows, 1 row and 4 columns. Find their transpose. Find their transpose. Let's find A transpose first. For A transpose, we interchange rows and columns in matrix A. Interchange rows and columns in matrix A. That means I put rows in columns. So I write A11, A12, A13, A14, A15 in the first column. And then I write A21, A22, A23, A24, A25 in the second column. And then I write A31, A32, A33, a34, A35 in the third column. That's the transpose of A. It's red. A transpose. Next, let's find B transpose. For B transpose, do the same thing. In matrix B, we put rows in columns. Put rows in columns. I have one, f one, three, five, seven. In the first column, I put the first row in the first column, and then I put the second row in the second column. I get negative one, two, negative three, four. That's B transpose. Next, for C transpose, do the same thing. Put rows in columns. That's only one row. That's only one row. So I put this row in column. Two. 4, 6, A. That's how we find transpose. We put rows in colors. Note, if A is a M by M matrix, then A transpose is what? Since I interchange rows and colors, A transpose will be a M by M matrix. I interchange rows and colors. So A transpose is a N by M matrix. Since I interchange rows and colors. For example, here, A is a 3 by 5 matrix. Then A transpose will be a 5 by 3 matrix. There are 5 rows and 3 colors. 
B is a 2 by 4 matrix. And then B transpose will be a 2 by 4 matrix. B is a 2 by 4 matrix. B transpose will be a 4 by 2 matrix. There are 4 rows and 2 columns. B transpose is a 4 by 2 matrix. There are 4 rows and 2 columns. C is a 1 by 4 matrix. C is a 1 by 4 matrix. So T, C transpose will be a 4 by 1 matrix. There are 4 rows and 1 column. Next, let me introduce square matrix. If a matrix has the same number of rows and columns, then it's called a square matrix. If A is a n by n matrix, then we say A is a square matrix of order n. Here, A has n rows and n columns, so we say A is a square matrix of order n. Let's look at the following example. Let matrix A be a 3 by 3 matrix. It has three rows and three columns. Let B be a two by two matrix. It has two rows and two columns. Let C be a one by one matrix. It has one row and one column. Then we say A is a square matrix of order three. A has three rows and three columns. So we say A is a square matrix of order three. B is a square matrix of order two because B has two rows and two columns. And C is a square matrix of order one. C has one row and one column. That's how we define square matrix. Next, let me introduce the main diagonal of a square matrix. Let A be a n by n matrix. The main diagonal of A consists all entries A11, A22, A33, and so on. So, in this example, entries A11, A22, A33, Together, let's call the main diagonal of matrix A. And in this matrix, let's make this entries B11, B22. These two entries together is called the main diagonal of matrix B. And this main diagonal of matrix C. That's called the main diagonal of the matrix. And the other diagonal is called the minor diagonal. Minor diagonal. That's called the main diagonal. The other, the other diagonal is called the minor diagonal. The other diagonal is called the minor diagonal. That's the main diagonal. From left to right, that's the main diagonal. The other diagonal is called the minor diagonal. So in the previous example, the main diagonal of A is what? The main diagonal of A consists of entries negative 2, 2, and 0. And the main diagonal of B, the main diagonal of B consists of what? The main diagonal of B con contains the entries 3 and 5. And the main diagonal of C consists only number 5. The main diagonal of C contains only number 5. That's the main diagonal of a square matrix. Next, let me introduce trace. Let A be a square matrix. The sum of all entries in the main diagonal of A is called the trace of A, denoted by TR of A. So, if A is a square matrix, the sum of all entries in the main diagonal is called the trace of A. The sum of all entries in the diagonal is called the trace of A. That's the trace of B. That's the trace of C. If I add them up, it's called the trace. Let's look at an example. In the previous example, find the trace of matrices A, B, and C. How do we find trace of A? Trace of A is the sum of all matrices, the sum of all entries in the main diagonal of A. The sum of all entries in the main diagonal of A. A11 plus A22 plus A33. Let's. Let's negative 2 plus 2 plus 0, which is 0. How about the trace of B? Trace of B is the sum of all entries in the main diagonal of B, which is 3 plus 5. That's B11 plus B22, which is 3 plus 5 equal to A. How about the trace of C? Trace of C is the sum of all entries in the main diagonal of C, which is only number 5. That's C11 equal to number 5. That's trace of C. 
be very, very careful in order, to, in order to find trace of a matrix. The matrix must be a square matrix. If the matrix is not a square matrix, then the trace of the matrix is undefined. Note. If a matrix is not a square matrix, then its trace is undefined. If a matrix is not a square matrix, then its trace is undefined, because its main diagonal that does not exist. If a matrix is not a square matrix, its main diagonal does not exist. Therefore, its trace is undefined. Next, let's look at some examples about matrix operation. Let matrices A, B, C, D be defined as the following matrix. Compute each of the following expressions, if it's defined. Part A. Let's compute C times B first. How do we compute C times B? Matrix C is 2, 1, 0. Negative 3, 1, 4. Negative 1, 0. Negative 2. 0, 2, 3. Matrix B is 1, 0, 4. Negative 2, 3, and 1. 4, 0, 6. Before we multiply two matrices, let's verify their size first. Matrix C here is a 4 by 3 matrix. It has 4 rows and 3 columns. Matrix B is a 3 by 3 matrix. It has 3 rows and 3 columns. If the numbers of the column in the first matrix is the same as the number of rows in the second matrix, we are allowed to multiply two matrices. And their product will be will be a 4 by 3 matrix. First number represents the number of rows. Last number represents represent the number of colors. If I multiply, I'll get a 4 by 3 matrix. So it will be 4 rows and 3 colors. For the first entry here, we use first row times first column. 2 times 1 is 2. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 0 times 4 is 0. 2 plus negative 2 is 0. Second entry here, using the first row times second column, we use row times column when we multiply matrices. First row times second column. 2 times 0 is 0. 1 times 3 is 3. 0 times 0 is 0. So all together I get 3. Next. That's the first row, third column. I use first row times third column. 2 times 4 is 8. 1 times 1 is 1. 0 times 6 is 6. 8 plus 1 is 9. Next, I use first, second row times first column. Row times column. That's second row, first column. Use second row times first column. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 4 times 4 is 16. Negative 3 plus negative 2 is negative 5. Negative 5 plus 16 is 11. Next, second row times second column. 0, 3, 0. Together is 3. Next, row times column. Negative 12 plus 1 is negative 11. Negative 11 plus 24 is 13. Next, third row, first column. So I use the third row times first column. That's negative 1, 0. Negative 1 plus 0 is negative. Negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1. Plus negative 8 is negative 9. Next, third row, second column. 0, 0, 0. Together is 0. Next, third row, third column. Negative, one, negative 4 plus 0 plus negative 12. Negative 4 plus negative 12 is negative 16. 
Next, fourth row, first column. Take fourth row times first column. Zero, negative four. Negative four plus 12 is A, passive A. Next, fourth row, second column. Zero, six, zero. Together is six. Next, third row, fourth row, third column. Fourth row, third column. Take fourth row times the third column. Zero, two. Two plus sixteen is two plus eighteen is twenty. Next the product C times B. Next, let's compute C times D. Matrix C is 2, 1, 0. Negative 3, 1, 4. Negative 1, 0, negative 2. 0, 2, 3. Matrix D is 3, negative 2, 1, negative 4. Negative 1 and 2. Now we multiply matrices. Let's verify their size first. First matrix is 4 by 3. It has 4 rows and 3 columns. Second matrix is 3 by 2. It has 3, three rows and 2 columns. If the number of rows in the first matrix is the same number of columns, so if the number of columns in the first matrix is the same number of rows in the second matrix, then we are allowed to multiply matrices. Their answer will be 4 rows and 2 columns. First number represents rows and last number represents columns. So the answer will be four rows, two columns. Let's multiply. For the first entry here, that's first row, first column. Take first row times first column. Six plus one. Is seven plus zero is seven. Next entry, first row, second column. Take first row times second column. Negative four plus negative four is negative a. Negative a plus zero is negative a. Next, second row, first column. Take second row times first column. It's negative nine. Negative nine plus one is negative a. Negative A plus negative 4 is negative 12. Next, second row, second column. Take second row times second column. That's positive 6. Positive 6 minus 4 is 2. 2 plus A is 10. Next, third row, first column. Take third row times first column. That's negative 3 plus 0 plus 2. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Next, third, third row, second column. Take third row times second column. That's positive 2, 0, and negative 4. Positive 2 plus negative 4 is negative 2. Next, fourth row, first column. 0, 2, negative 3. 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1. Next, fourth row, second column. Take fourth row times second column. It's 0, negative A, positive 6. Negative A plus positive 6 is negative 2. That's an answer for C times D. Next, let's compute D times A. Matrix D is 3, negative 2, 1, negative 4, negative 1, positive 2. That's matrix D. Matrix, matrix A is 4, 1, negative 2, 3, 2, 0, 1, negative 5. Before we multiply matrices, let's check their size first. 
First matrix is 3 by 2. It has 3 rows and 2 columns. Second matrix is 2 by 4. It has 2 rows and 4 columns. If the number of columns in the first matrix is the same as number of rows in the second matrix, then we are allowed to multiply matrices. The answer will be a 3 by 4 matrix. First number represents the number of rows. Second number represents the number of, number of columns. So it will be 3 rows and 4 columns. If I multiply, it will be 3 rows and 4 columns. Let's multiply. First entry here is the first row, first column. Take first row times first column. 12 plus negative 4 is A. Next, first row, second column. 3 plus 0 is 3. Next, first row times third column. That's negative 6 plus negative 2. That's negative A. Next, first row, fourth column. 9 plus 10 is 19. Next, second row, first column. 4 plus negative A is negative 4. Second row, second column. 1 plus 0 is 1. Second row, third column. Negative 2 plus negative 4 is negative 6. Second row, fourth column. 3 plus 20, that's 23. Next, third row, first column. Take third row times first column. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Third row, second column. That's negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1. Next, third row, third column. Take third row times third column. That's positive 2 plus positive 2 plus positive 2. It will be 4. Next, third row, four column. Negative 3 plus negative 10 will be negative 13. That's D times A. Next, let's compute. Trace of A times A complement. Trace of A times A complement. Let's compute A times A complement first, then we compute the trace. Let's compute A times A complement first, then we compute the trace. A times A complement. Matrix A is 4, 1, negative 2, and 3 in the first row. 2, 0, 1, and negative 4 in the second row. That's matrix A. For matrix A complement, we put the rows in columns. So I get 4, 1, negative 2, 3. 2, 0, 1, negative 4 in columns. For A complement, we put rows in columns and then multiply the matrices. Before we multiply the matrices, let's verify their dimensions first. First matrix is two rows, four columns. So that's a four by two by four matrix. It has two rows and four columns. Second matrix is a four by two matrix. It has four rows and two columns. If number of columns in the first matrix is the same as number of rows in the second matrix, we are allowed to multiply matrices. And their answer will be two rows and two columns. First number represents the number of rows. Last number represents the number of columns. So it will be a 2 by 2 matrix. For the first entry here, first row, first column. So take first row times first column. That's 16. 16 plus 1 is 17. 17 plus 4 is 20. 17 plus 4 is 21. 21 plus 9 is 30. Next, first row, second column. Take first row times second column. That's A. A plus 0 is A. A plus negative 2 is 6. 6 plus negative 15 is negative 9. Next, second row, first column. Take second row times first column. That's A. A plus 0 is A. A plus negative 2 is 6. 
6 plus negative 15 is negative 9. Next, second row, second column. Take second row times second column. That's 4. 4 plus 0 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. 5 plus 25 is 30. That's A times A transpose. Next, let's compute the trace. Trace of A times A transpose. Trace is the sum of the diagonal. Trace of A times A transpose is the sum of the main diagonal. Here we have 30 plus 30. The sum of the entries in the, in the main diagonal. Here we have 30 plus 30, which is 60. That's the trace of A trans. That's the trace of A times A transpose. Next, let's compute AC plus 3D transpose. Matrix A is 4, 1, negative 2, 3, 2, 0, 1, negative 5. Matrix C is 2, 1, 0, negative 3, 1, 4, negative 1, 0, negative 2, 0, 2, 3, plus 3 times D transpose. For D transpose in matrix D, we put rows in columns. So put first row in the first column, I guess 3, negative 2. Put the second row in the second column, I get 1, negative 4. Put the third row in the third column, I get negative 1, 2. Let's multiply the matrices first. When we multiply matrices, take row times column. Take row times column, we see the dimension match here. Then let's multiply. First row times first column, that's A. A plus negative 3 is 5. 5 plus 2 is 7. 7 plus 0 is 7. Next, first row, second column. 4 plus 1 is 5. 5 plus 0 is 5. 5 plus 6 is 11. Next, row times column. 0, 0 plus 4 is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 plus 9 is 17. Next, row times column. 4 plus 0 is 4. 4 plus negative 1 is 3. 3 plus 0 is 3. Next, row times column. 2 plus 0 is 2. Plus 0 is 2. 2 plus negative 10 is negative 8. Next, row times column. 0 plus 0 is 0. Plus negative 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus negative 15 is negative 17. Next, when we have 3 multiplied by a matrix, we multiply 3 to every entries in the matrix. Multiply 3 to every entries in the matrix. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. 3 times 2 is 6. Then, when we add matrices, we add the corresponding entries. 7 plus 9 is 16. 11 plus 3 is 14. 17 plus negative 3 is 14. 3 plus negative 6 is negative 3. Negative 8 plus negative 12 is negative 20. Negative 17 plus 6 is negative 11. That's the answer to part E. Now F. Compute B times C transpose minus C times B transpose. B times C transpose minus C times B transpose. 
So for the first expression, B times C transpose, let's compute C transpose first. For the second part, we need to compute the product first, and then compute the transpose. So for the first part, do the transpose first, then multiply the matrix. For the second part, do the parentheses first. We multiply the matrices first, and then find the transpose. So let's compute B times C transpose first. Let's compute B times C transpose first. Matrix B is 1, 0, 4, negative 2, 3, 1, 4, 0, 6. That's matrix B. For C transpose, in matrix C, in matrix C, put rows in columns. In matrix C, put rows in columns. I have 2, 1, 0. Negative 3, 1, 4. Negative 1, 0. Negative 2, 0, 2, 3. Put rows in columns and then multiply. Take row times columns. First row times first column. It's 2 plus 0, plus 0 is 2. First row, second column, negative 3 plus 0 is negative 3, plus 16 is positive 13. Next, first row times third column, negative 1 plus 0 plus negative 8. Negative 1 plus negative 8 is negative 9. Next. First row times 4 column. 0, 0 plus 12 is 12. So we are done with the first row. Move to the second row. Row times columns. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Plus 0 is negative 1. Next. Second row times second column. Passive 6 plus 3 is 9. 9 plus 4 is 13. Next. Second row times third column. 2 plus 0 plus negative 2. That's 0. Next. Second row times fourth column. 0 plus 6 is 6. 6 plus 3 is 9. Next, third row times first column. A plus zero plus zero is A. Next, 12, negative 12 plus zero plus 24 is 12. Next, negative 4 plus zero plus negative 12. Negative 4 plus negative 12 is negative 16. Next, 0 plus 0 plus 18 is 18. That's B times C transpose. Next, we compute C times B. Then we compute the, compute the transpose of their product. C times B. Let me copy the matrix C and D here. C and B here. Matrix C is 2, 1, 0. Negative 3, 1, 4. Negative 1, 0, negative 2. 0, 2, 3. That's matrix C. Matrix B is 1, 0, 4. Negative 3, 1, negative 2, 3, 1. 4, 0, 6. Let's multiply. Take row times column. Row times column. 2 plus negative 2 is 0. Plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 3 is 3. Plus 0 is 3. A plus 1 
is 9. 9 plus 0 is 9. Next. Second row times first column. Negative 3 plus negative 2 is negative 5. Negative 5 plus 16 is 11. Next. 0 plus 3 is 3. 3 plus 0 is 3. Next. Negative 12 plus 1 is negative 11. Negative 11 plus 24 is 13. Next. Negative 1 plus 0 plus negative A. Negative 1 plus negative A is negative 9. Next. 0, 0, 0. Next. Negative 4 plus 0 plus negative 12 is negative 16. Next. 0 plus negative 4 plus 12. Negative 4 plus 12 is A. Next. 0, 6 plus 0 is 6. Next. Fourth row, third column. 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 plus 18 is 20. Let's C times B. Now next, we compute. B times C transpose minus C times B transpose. First expression, B times C transpose is what we have here. 2, 13, negative 9, 12. Negative 1, 13, 0, 9. A, 12, negative 16, positive 18. Minus C times B transpose. This is C times B. For the transpose, I put rows in colors. For the transpose, I put the rows in colors. So I have 0, 3, 9. Put the first row in the first column. 11, 3, 13. Put the second row in the second column. Negative 9, 0, negative 16. Put the third row in the third column. A, 6, 20. Put the fourth row in the fourth column. And then subtract the matrices. When we subtract matrices, we subtract the corresponding entries. 2 minus 0 is 2. 13 minus 11 is 2. Negative 9 minus negative 9 is 0. 12 minus a is 4. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. 13 minus 3 is 10. 0 minus 0 is 0. 9 minus 6 is 3. A minus 9 is negative 1. 12 minus 13 is negative 1. Negative 16 minus negative 16 is 0. 18 minus 20 is negative 2. That's an answer. Next. Part G. Compute. Trace of half of B. Trace of half times B. Let's compute half times B first. Half times B, we take half times matrix B. Matrix B is 1, 0, 4 in the first row. Negative 2, 3, 1 in the second row. 4, 0, 6 in the third row. When we multiply a scalar to a matrix, we multiply a scalar to, multiply a scalar to every entry in the matrix. So here I get half, 0, 2, negative 1, 3, half, half, 2, 0, 3. That's half of B. Then for the trace, trace is the sum of the main diagonal. Trace is the sum of all entries in the main diagonal. So here we have half plus 3 half plus 3. Half plus 3 half is 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. Let's trace of half of B. H. Compute trace of A, C, D.
Let's compute a times c times d first. So for a times c times d, if there are three matrices multiplied together, we multiply from left to right. Let's multiply matrix A, C first, and then take the result, multiply by matrix D. Multiply matrix A, C first, and then take the result, multiply by matrix D. So multiply matrix A, C first. Matrix A is 4, 1, negative 2, 3, 2, 0, 1, negative 5. Matrix C. Matrix C here is 2, 1, 0, negative 3, 1, 4, negative 1, 0, negative 2, 0, 2, 3. Use row times column, rows times columns. So here, for matrix A times C, we can copy from the previous part. Matrix A times C. We got this matrix. 7, 11, 17. 3, negative 8, negative 17. 7, 11, times 17. 7, 11, 17. 3, negative 8, negative 17. For matrix A times C, I copy the answer from the previous part. That's A times C here. Next, for matrix A, C, D, take the result of matrix A, C, take the result of A, C times D. Result of A, C is 7, 11, 17, 3, negative A, negative 17, times matrix D. Matrix D here is 3, negative 2, 1, negative 4. 1, negative 1, 2. Then multiply. We use row times column. Rows times columns. Rows times columns. 21 plus 11 is 33. 21 plus 11 is 32. 32 plus negative 17 is 15. Row times column is negative 14. Negative 14 plus negative 44 is negative 58. Negative 58 plus 34 is negative 24. Row times column. 9. 9 plus negative A is 1. 1 plus, 1 plus 17 is 18. Next, row times column. Negative 6 plus 32 is 26. 26 plus negative 34. 26 plus negative 34 is negative A. That's the product A, C, D. That's the part of matrix A times C times D. Next, let's compute the trace of A, C, D. Trace is the sum of the entries in the main diagonal. Here we have 15 plus negative A. 15 plus negative A is number 7. That's the trace of the matrix A, C, D. Next, let me introduce row vectors and column vectors of a matrix. Let A be a m by n submatrix. That means A has m rows and n columns. Here, matrix A has m rows and n columns. The entries on each row form a 1 by n submatrix of A, which is called a row vector of A. The entries on each row form a 1 by n submatrix of A. So that's a 1 by n submatrix. That's also 1 by n submatrix. Let me call this submatrix R1, the second one R2, next one R3, the last one Rm. 
So R1, R2, R3, Rm, they are 1 by n submatrix of A, and they are called row vectors of A. They are called row vectors of A. Similarly, the entries on each column form an m by 1 submatrix of A, which is called a column vector of A. The entries on each column is form a 1 by m submatrix. Each column is a 1 by m submatrix. Let's call this submatrix C1, C2, C3, Cn. So C1, C2, C3, Cn, they are m by 1 submatrix, and they are also called column vectors of A. They are also called column vectors of matrix A. Once we know the row vectors and column vectors of A, next, let me show you a different way to rewrite A. If A is an m by n submatrix, it's m by n matrix, with row vectors R1, R2, R3, Rm. If A is an m by n matrix with row vectors R1, R2, R3, Rm, then matrix A can also be written as A equal to R1, R2, R3, Rm. Here, R1 represents the matrix in the first row. R2 represents matrix in the second row, the submatrix in the second row. R3 represents the submatrix in the third row. Rm represents submatrix in the last row. So matrix A can also be written as R1, R2, R3, Rm. That's another way to rewrite A. Writing this way is a little easier than writing all the entries. Writing this way is easier than writing all the entries. Similarly, if A is a m by n matrix, with column vectors C1, C2, C3, up to Cn, then A can also be written as A equal to C1, C2, C3, Cn. Here, C1 represents the entries in the first column. C1 is a column vector. C2 represents entries in the second column. C3 represents entries in the third column. And Cn represents entries in the last column. Here, C1, C2, C3, Cn, they are m by 1 submatrix. So, that's another, way to, that's another way to write matrix A. Writing this way using row vector or column vectors is easier than writing all entries in matrix A. So that's another way to write matrix A. Next, let me show you how to rewrite matrix multiplication using row vectors and column vectors. Let A be an m by k matrix. with row vectors R1, R2, up to Rm. A has m rows, row vectors R1, R2, Rm. 
and let P let P be a K by N matrix. with column vectors C1, C2, up to Cn then we know that matrix A can be written as R1, R2 up to Rm. Matrix A has m rows. And matrix B can be written as C1, C2, Cn. Matrix B has n columns. Matrix B has n columns. They are product A times B is a M by N matrix. They are product A times B is a M by N matrix because A is a M by K matrix. B is a K by N matrix. If the numbers of columns in matrix A is the same as number of rows in matrix B, then we are allowed to multiply matrix A and B. Their product AB has m rows and n columns. That's how I get this. Their product AB is an m by n matrix. And A, B can be written as can be, can be written as what? A times B is what? Matrix A is R1, R2 up to Rm Matrix B is C1, C2 up to Cn. How do I multiply two matrices? When we multiply matrices, we take row times column. When we multiply matrices, we take row times column. So in the first place here, that's first row, first column. I take first row in matrix A times first column in matrix B. That's R1 times C1. Second place here, that's first row, second column. I take first row times second column in matrix B. First row in matrix A times second column in matrix B. So that's R1 times C2. Next is R1 times C3 and so on. Eventually it will be R1 times Cn. There's no comma here. That's an entry in the first row. In the second row, that's second row. This place is second row, first column. So I take the second row in matrix A times first column in matrix B. I get R2 times C1. That's second row, second column. I take second row times the second column in matrix B. Next, second row, third column. And eventually in the second row, nth column. Next will be in the, next, next in the third row, first column. Taking first, taking the third row in, in matrix A times the first column in matrix B. Third row in matrix A times second column in matrix B. Third row, third column. Eventually, third row, n column. So similarly, in the last row. Continue in the last row. That's the M row, first column. M row, first column. 
that's an m row first column so i take rm times c1 rm times rm times c2 that's m row second column rm times c3 and da 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 rm times cn that's an entry in the m row n column So that's an entry of A, B, A times B. Here, R1 times C1, R2 times C2, R1 times C2, those are matrix replication. Those are matrix replication. Let me show you an example. In earlier today, I showed this example. This matrix times this matrix equal to this matrix here. In the first matrix, let me call the first row R1. In the second, in, let me call the second row R2. Let me call the third row R3. Let me call the fourth row R4. In the second matrix, let me call the first column C1. Second column C2. Then, if we apply this formula here, it can be if I multiply these two matrices, R1, R2, R3, R4. The first matrix can be written as can be written in this way. Second matrix can be written in, in the way C1, C2. If I multiply the matrices, I take rows times columns. So from the first entry here, take first row times first column. R1, C1. Here, take first row times second column. R1, C2. Next, second row, first column. R2, C1, R2, C2. Next, third row, first column, third row, second column, the fourth row, first column, the fourth row, second column. How do we multiply R1 times R1 times C1? R1 is a R1 here is a one by three matrix. Two, one, zero. C one is a three by one matrix. Three, one, negative one. So when I multiply these two matrices, use row times column. We multiply the corresponding entries. I get 6, 1, 0, then add them up. I get 7. That's how I get 7 here. Next, R1 times R, R1 times C2. That's R1. Two, one, zero. There are no commas here. Two one zero. C two is the vector. It's a column vector. Negative two, negative four, two. When we multiply these two matrices, we multiply the corresponding entries and then add them up. Two times negative two. One times negative four. Zero times two. That's negative four, negative four, zero. Add them up. We get negative a. That's how we compute matrix in this way. That's how we compute R1 times C1, R2 times C2. So R1 times C1, R2, R1 times C2. We can also consider this as dot product. If we consider R1, C1 as vectors, we can also consider this as dot product. What does dot product mean? Let V, let U equal to U1, U2, Un, and V, B, B1, V2, Vn. Let U and V 
the vectors. with n components. Then the dot product of u dot v is defined as u dot v we multiply the corresponding components u1 times v1 plus the adding up u2 times v2 plus da, 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 eventually un times vn that's how we define that product so for matrix multiplication r1 times c1 r2 times c2 we can also consider that product. So if we treat R1 as a vector, let me use the second row as an example. Second row, we have R2 times C1. If we treat R2 as a vector, R2 is in a vector, negative 3, 1, and 4. C1, if I treat C1 as a vector, 3, 1, negative 1. Then they are dot product R1 times C1, R1 dot C1. We multiply the corresponding components, negative 3 times 3. Plus 1 times 1, plus 4 times negative 1. That's negative 9, plus 1, minus 4. It's negative 12. That's the same as what we have here. Next, R2. R2 times C2. This is matrix multiplication. But we can consider this as dot product. If I train this as dot, if I train this as dot product, R2 is negative 3, 1, and 4. Write R2, C2 as a vector. C2 is negative 2, negative 4, and 2. If I use star product, R2 times C2 is negative 3 times negative 2 plus 1 times negative 4 plus 4 times 2. I get 6 minus 4 plus A. That's 10. So that's an entry here. We get exactly the same thing. So for for these entries here, for this entry here, R three C one, R three R three C two, we can consider this as matrix replication, or we can consider this as star product. Either way, give you the same. Either way, give you exactly the same answer. So that's one way to write A times B. Next, I'll show another way to write A times B. Next, let's first of all compute A times C1, A times C2, A times Cn. Let's compute A times C1, A times C2, and A times Cn first. Here, C1, C2, Cn, they are column vectors in matrix B. C1, C2, Cn, they are column vectors in matrix B. How do we multiply A times C1? Here, matrix A is an M by K matrix. How about C1? C1 is a column vector of matrix B. And B has K rows. B has K rows. So C1 is a K by 1 matrix. C1 is a K by 1 matrix. Because matrix B has K rows. So C1 is a k by 1 matrix. Since number of columns in matrix A is the same number of rows in, in matrix C1, so we are allowed to multiply matrix. Our result is an m by 1 matrix. 
of a result is an m by one matrix. Now, how do we multiply the matrix? We know that the row vectors in matrix A is R1, R2, up to Rm, R1, R2, R3, up to Rm. When we multiply by C1, we take row times column. In C1, there's only one column. In C1, there's only one column. So take row times column. We get a new matrix. R1, C1. First row and first column, because the answer is m by one matrix. So it has m rows, one columns. First row, first column. Second row, first column. R two times C one. R three times C one. Eventually, we have R m times C one. How about A times C2? Same thing. Matrix A can be written as row 1, row 2, row 3. We can write matrix A using row vectors times C2. C2 is a column vector. So when we multiply, there's only one column here. Take row times column. You get R1, C2. R2, C2, R3, C2. Rm, C2. And so on, we can do the same thing, similarly, we can do the, do the same calculation for the rest. Now observe the result here. A times C1, we get this. That's exactly the same as the first column in matrix AB. A times C2 is this. That's exactly the same as the second column in matrix AB. So we can see that here. A times C1, AC1, is a column vector of AB. AC2 is the second column vector of AB. So here we can see that AC1, AC2, and eventually ACN. They are column vectors. Of matrix A B. A C one, A C two, A C N. They are column vectors of A B. Hence, matrix A B can be rewritten as. Can also be written as A times B. B has columns C1, C2, C3, up to Cn. If we multiply, we see that AC1, AC2, ACN, they are column vectors in AB. AC1, AC2, AC3, ACN, they are column vectors in AB. So this is this can be written as A times C1, A times C2, da, 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 A times Cn. Since they are column vectors, since they are column vectors in AB. So that's another way to write AB. AC1, AC2, ACN. Let me present the first column in AB, second column in AB, and that's the nth column in AB. Similarly, if we compute R1 times B, what do we get? R2 times B and Rm times B, what do we get? Here, R1, R2, Rm, 
they are row vectors in matrix A. R1, R2, Rm, they are row vectors in matrix A. Let's compute R1 times D. What do we get? Since R1 is a row vector in matrix B, in matrix A, A has k columns. A has k columns. So R1 is a 1 by k matrix. R1 is a 1 by k matrix. How about B? Matrix B here is k by n matrix. B is a k by n matrix. Since the number of columns in the first matrix is the same as the number of rows in the second matrix, we are allowed to multiply these two matrices. Their answer will be a 1 by n submatrix. Their answer will be a 1 by n matrix. First of all, matrix B has column vectors C1, C2, Cn. So matrix B can be rewrite as C1, C2, da, 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 Cn. When we multiply matrices, we take row times column. There's only one row here. R1 represents a row vector. There's only one, there's only one row here. So row times column, row times column. R1 times C1, row times column, I get R1 times C2. And similarly, last one I have R1 times Cn. This is a 1 by n submatrix. This is a 1 by n matrix. R1 times D, that's a 1 by n matrix. Then similarly, if I compute, R2 times D, what do we get? Matrix B can be written as C1, C2, up to Cn. If I multiply, take row times column. There's only one row here. There's only one row here. Row times column. I get R2 times C1. R2 times C2. And da -da 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 -da. R2 times Cn. And similarly, we can compute the rest in a similar way. We we'll compute the rest in a similar way. Now let's observe this entry here. I get R1, C1, R2, R1, C2, R1, Cn. That's exactly the first row in matrix AB. So this is a row vector in AB. This is a row vector in AB. Second row here, R2, C1, R2, C2, R2, Cn. That's exactly the same as the second row. So that's another row vector. A B. That's another row vector in A B. So here we can see that R1 B R2 B R M B similarly R M B they are row vectors of A B R1 B R2 B Similarly, R M B, they are row vectors of A B. Hence, if they are no vectors, if they are row vectors, hence A B can also be written as A B equal to. Matrix A can be written as R1 times R2 times Rm times D. If I multiply, I get row vectors R1B, R2B, and Rmb. If I multiply, I get AB with row vectors R1B, R2B, yeah, R1B, R2B, they are no row vectors. RMB. Uh, 
Here, R1B represent the entries in the first row of AB. R2B represent entries in the second row of AB. RMB represent entries in the M row of AB. So keep these three formulas in mind. Those are three ways to rewrite matrix AB. Keep these three formulas in mind. With these three formulas, we know that if we want to compute if we compute the entry in the i row and the j column in matrix ab the entry in the i row j column is we take the i row in the first in matrix A times the j column in matrix B. So if we try to compute the i row and j column in matrix A B, if we try to compute the i row and j column in A B matrix A B, I take the i i row in matrix A times the j column in matrix B. Those are matrix multiplication. Ri times Cj, those are matrix multiplication. Or we can use dot product. Here, Ri times Cj it must be matrix multiplication or dot product. Based on, the first, based on the first formula, we know that if we want to compute the entries in the i row and the dress column in A, B, we simply take the i row from matrix A times the dress column from matrix B. Now, if We want to compute the i row in matrix AB. What should we do here? Here, R1 times D represent the first row in AB. R2 times B represents, represents second row in AB. So from the i row, we take Ri times D. So from the i row in matrix AB, we simply take Ri times matrix B. That's how we compute the i row in matrix AB. Similarly, If we want to compute the J column in matrix AB, what should we do here? Here, A times C1 represents first column in matrix AB. A times C2 represents second column. So similarly, for the J column, we use A times CJ. So if we, if we want to compute the J column, if we want to compute J column in matrix AB, We simply take A times C sub J, where CJ is the column vector, is the J column in matrix B. Here, Ri 
is an ice ice row in matrix A. And CJ is the J's column in matrix B. So, if we want to compute the entries in the i row and J's column, take Ri times Cj. If we want to compute the i row in matrix AB, we take the i row in matrix A times matrix B. If we want to compute the J's column in matrix AB, I take A times the J's column in matrix B. Next, let's put another example here. Let A be a 4 by 5 matrix. Let B be a 5 by 4 matrix. Part A. In matrix AB, find the entries in the second, second row, third column, and find the entries in the third row, first column. Part B. Find the third row in matrix AB. Part C. Find the second column in matrix AB. So let's do part A first. In matrix AB, find the entries in the second row in the third column. According to the previous formula, we know that in matrix AB, for the entries in the i's row in the j's column, we take Ri times Cj. Ri represents the i's row in the first matrix. Cj represents j's column in the second matrix. So here, for, for the entries in the second row in the third column of AB, we, we, we use the second row in the first matrix. times the third column in the, sec in the second matrix. Second row in the first matrix times the third row in the second matrix. Then we multiply the corresponding entries and add them up. 4 times 1 is 4. 0 times 2 is 0. 3 times 6 is 18. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. 1 times 3 is 3. Then adding up, I get 22 minus 2 is 20. 20 plus 3 is 23. For the entries in the third row, first column, do the same thing. We use the third row in the first matrix. We use the entries in the we use the third row in the first matrix. 9, 4, 6, negative 6, 5. Times the first column in the second matrix. Times the first column in the second matrix. 6, 3, 7, 2, negative 4. Then multiply the corresponding entries and add them up. Here I have 9 times 6 is 54. 4 times 3 is 12. 6 times 7 is 42. Negative 6 times 2 is negative 12. 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. And then adding up. 12 will cancel. Here I get 96 minus 20 is 76. That's an entries in the third row, first column. That's part A. Part B. Find the third row in matrix AB. Find the third row in matrix AB. So according to the previous formula, in order to find i's row in matrix AB, take Ri times B, where Ri is in the i's row in the first matrix. B is the second matrix. Take Ri times B. Ri is the i's row in the first matrix. And B is the second matrix. So here, for the third row in AB, we use R3 times B. Here, R3 is the third row in the first matrix.
third row the first matrix times the entire matrix B. So take row times column from the first row, first column. Here I get 76. First row times first column, I get 76. Then from the first row times second column, multiply the corresponding entries. Nine times two is 18. Four times 94 is 94. 6 times negative 4 is negative 30. Negative 6 times negative 3 is 18. 5 times 1 is 5. Tens of 18. Negative 4 plus negative 30 is negative 34. Negative 34 plus, not, plus 5 is negative 29. Next, take row times the third column. Take this row times the third column. 9 times 1 is 9. 4 times 2 is 8. 6 times 6 is 36. Negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. 5 times 3 is 15. 9 plus 8 is 17. 17 plus, se 17 plus 36 is 53. 53 take away 6 is 47. 47 plus 15 is 62. Next, take this row times the last column. 9 times 8 is 72. 4 times 1 is 4. 6 times 3 is 18. Negative 6 times 0 is 0. 5 times 9 is 45. 72 plus 18 is 90. 4 plus 45 is 49. 90 plus 49 is 139. That's an entry in the third row of AB. That's an entry in the third row of AB. Plus C. Find the second column in AB. Find the second column in AB. According to the formula, we know that. For the j's column in AB, we take matrix A times CJ. For the j's column in AB, we take matrix A times CJ, where matrix A is the first matrix. CJ is the j's column in matrix B. CJ is the j's column in matrix B. So take matrix A. 2, 3, 7, 6, negative 4, 4, 0, 3, negative 2, 1, 9, 4, 6, negative 6, 5, negative A, 4, 3, negative 4, 2, times the second column in matrix B, times the second column in matrix B, second column in matrix B is 2, Native 1, native 5, native 3, and 1, and then multiply. 
take row times column. Multiply the corresponding entries. 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 1 times 3 is 3. Negative 5 times 7 is negative 35. Negative 3 times 6 is negative 18. 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. And then adding up. Okay, cancel. Three positive three plus negative thirty four is negative thirty two. Negative thirty two plus negative eighteen is negative fifty. Next, take second row times this column. Two times four is eight. Negative one times zero is zero. Negative four times three is negative fifteen. Negative three times negative two is positive six. One times one is one. Adding up. 8 plus 6 is 14, 14 plus 1 is 15, 15 minus 15 get, get cancelled, we get 0. Next, take the third row times this column. 2 times 9 is 18. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Negative 5 times 6 is negative 30. Negative 3 times negative 6 is positive 18. 5 times 1 is 5. 18 minus 4 is 14. 14 minus 30 is negative 16. Negative 16 plus 18 is 2. 2 plus 5 is 7. Next, take the last row times this column. 2 times negative a. 2 times negative a is negative 16. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 15. Negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. 1 times 2 is 2. Negative 16 plus negative 4 is negative 20. Negative 20 plus negative 15 is negative 35. Negative 35 plus 12 is negative 23. Negative 23 plus 2 is negative 21. So that's an entry in the second column of matrix AB. That's the second column in matrix AB. I think there's a mistake here. In part B, the second entry here must be 7. The second entry must be 7. Take this row times second column. Let's do it again. It doesn't match here. It must be 7. 9 times 2 is 18. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Negative 4 times 6 is negative 30. Negative 3 times 6, negative 6 is positive 18. 1 times 5 is 5. Eighteen minus 4 is 14. 14 minus 30 is negative 16. Negative 16 plus 18 is 2. 2 plus 5 is 7. It should be 7 here. Let me match what we have here. It's the second row, third column. It's the second row, third column. It should be the same. Next, let me introduce linear combination of matrices. Let A1, A2, AN be matrices with the same size. And let K1, K2, KN be scalars. Scalars means real numbers. So let K1, K2 be real numbers. Then, an expression in the form of K1, A1 plus K2, A2 plus KN, AN is called a linear combination of a1, a2, an. So this expression is called linear combinations of a1, a2, an, with coefficients k1, k2, kn. 
the real numbers k1, k2, kn, they are called coefficients of this linear combination. Based on this definition, let's look at a theorem here. Let A be an m by n matrix. Let A be an m by n matrix. That means A has m rows and n columns. Matrix A has m rows and n columns. And let X be an m by 1 column matrix. Let X be an m by 1 column matrix. That means n row. X has n row and only one column. X has n rows with only, with, with only one column. Then the product AX, the product A times X, can always be, ex be expressed as a linear, combi linear combination of the column vectors in A with coefficients in X. The A times X can always be expressed as a linear combination of the column vectors in A with coefficients in X. Let's prove it. Let's prove it. So, A times X. Matrix A is A11, A12, A1M in the first row. A21, A22, A2N in the second row. And AM1. AM2 and AM in the last row. X is the column matrix. X is the column matrix. S1, S2 times Sn. When we multiply two matrices, we use row times column. We use row times column. So what do we get here? Use row times column. Take first row times this column. I get A11 times S1 plus A12 times S2 plus da -da 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 A1n times Sn. That's the first row. Next, for the second row, use row times column. Row times column. I get A21 times S1 plus A22 times S2 plus A2n times Sn and then for the last row I have Am1 times S1 plus Am2 times S2 plus Amn times Sn Next, this matrix this is an m by 1 matrix. This is an m by 1 matrix. It can be rewrite as. I can split the matrix. It can be, it can be re rewrite as. A11 S1. A21 S1. And AM1 S1. Plus. A12 X2. A22 S2 and AM2 S2 and then plus da, 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 until the last column A1N times SN A2N times SN da, 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 AMN times SN I can split this matrix into N different matrices I can split this matrix into n matrices here, n matrices here. Then for each matrices, we can see that in the first matrix here, in the first column matrix here, in the first column matrix here, x1 is a common factor. In the first column matrix here, x1 is a, is a column is x1 is a common factor. So I can pull out s1. If I pull out s1, I have a11, a21. AM1. In the second column here, we can see that X2 is a common factor. So I can pull out S2. If I pull out S2, I get A12, A22, and AM2. 
in the last column, I can pour SN. If I pour SN, what do I get here? If I, if I pour SN, I get A1N, A2N, and AMN. So for AX, I first of all multiply matrices. Then I have a I have an m by 1 matrix. This is an m by 1 color matrix. I multiply ax, I get m by 1 color matrix. Then I can split this matrix into n matrix. I split, split this matrix into n color matrices. This is n color matrices here. We have n. We have n color matrix here. I split this matrix into n color matrices here. Then for each color matrix, for each color matrix, I can pull on a common factor. In the first matrix, I pull out S1. In the second matrix, I pull out S2. In the last matrix, I pull out Sn. Then this equal to An. So I write AN as a linear combination of column vectors. Here I write AX as a linear combination of these column vectors in A. Each column here is a column vector in A. Each column here is a column vector in A with coefficients S1, S2, Sn. This is a linear combination of column vectors in A with coefficients S1, S2, Sn. These coefficients are entries. These coefficients are entries in X. These coefficients, they are entries in X. So here, it says that the product AX, the product AX, can always be expressed as a linear combination of column vectors in A, with coefficients in X. So those are column vectors in A, with coefficients S1, S2, S, Sn in X. That's what this theorem says. Next, let's consider a system of linear equations. A11S1 plus A12S2 plus A1NSN equal to B1. A21S1 plus A22S2 plus A21SN equal to B2, and so on. Consider this system of linear equations. For its augmented matrix, we put a coefficient of S1 in the first column. Put a coefficient of S2 in the second column, and then put a coefficient of Sn in the nth column, then put a constant in the last column. That's an augmented matrix of this system of linear equations. Now, next, we try to rewrite the system of linear equations using matrices. Next, we try to rewrite this system of linear equations using matrices. First of all, for matrices, I put left side equal to right side. I write left side as a color matrix, and write the right side as a color matrix, and then set them equal to each other. If two color matrices equal to each other, means first row equal to the first row, second row equal to the second row, and the last row equal to the last row. So I first of all write left side as a color matrix, write the right side as a color matrix, and set them equal to each other. That's the first step. Next, I try, to rewrite, I try to rewrite the left side. For the left side, A1, A11, S1, A12, S2, A1, N, Sn. It looks exactly the same as this expression here. And we know that this expression can be rewrite in this form, in the product form. This expression can be rewrite in this product form by going backward. So the expression on the left side can be rewrite as these two products. Leave the right side the same. So run the left side as a product of matrices. Leave the right side the same. Next, let's call this matrix A. Call this matrix A. Call this column vector, let's call this column matrix X. And call this column matrix B. 
So let's call this call this matrix, call this M M by M matrix A. Call this color matrix X. Call this color matrix B. Then this system of linear equations can be rewrite as A X equal to B. This system of linear equations can be rewrite as A X plus B. That's the matrix form. That's the matrix equation of this linear of of this system of linear equations. So that's how I rewrite this system of linear equations in matrix form. So for this system of linear equations, it can be rewrite as A S plus B, where A is the coefficients on the left side. X are the variables. B is a constant on the right side. That's the matrix equation of this system of linear equations. Here, if we observe, if we if observe this matrix with an augmented matrix, we can see that in the augmented matrix, this is matrix A, and this is matrix B. If we try to match this matrix with an augmented matrix, we can see that this is matrix A, and this is matrix B. So, for any matrix. For any matrix, for any matrix equation, for any matrix equation, A is equal to B, its augmented matrix is always in the form of A, B. This is matrix A, this is this is color matrix B. So for any matrix equation, A is equal to B, its augmented matrix is always in the form of matrix A, B.